Welcome back everybody. Now, I've had a spreadsheet I've kept related to this channel for about two years now, and any idea ever sent to me is on that spreadsheet, including every idea that I've had. In the middle of last year, I got an idea for weird wallets, but I never really knew where to start because there's so many of them out there. But when I did my mail time number three back in January of this year, there was so much interest in the Ollet wallet that I did that I thought maybe I'll revisit the idea. So that's what we got today. Now today I've got one of the most bizarre and diverse collections of items to compare I think I've ever had before. I've got everything from cheap to luxurious as seen on TV to just plain bizarre. These are the five wallets that I'm doing today. Let's take a look at them in no particular order. First up the cheap one. I got this marked down in an As Seen on TV store. It's a stick-on phone wallet that's supposed to be As Seen on TV, although I've never seen it advertised on television before. All right, the next one is the absolutely bizarre Mighty Wallet. It says it's the origami folding wallet, and this one is in the design of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And even more surprisingly, it has really good reviews. So, I, I don't know, we'll see how this one works. Next up in the luxury category is the extra wallet with a tracking card. For those of you attached to your devices, this Dream Fibonacci wallet is actually phone case and wallet built into one. And finally, since my channel was founded on As Seen on TV products, of course, I've got to pull out an old school As Seen on TV item, the top wallet. This is an interesting design. It holds 16 cards. I don't even know if I have 16 cards. And those are the contenders. This is the Ollet wallet, which I'm a huge fan of. Let's open this one up, pull all the contents out, and get started. Now, to be fair, I actually loaded this up with some extra things and uh, I covered all of the vital information with electrical tape. And again, with all the stuff in here, it's still very thin. So we got some bank cards, got a driver's license, some, some of my YouTube business cards, credit card. This is a phone case. I did one of my videos last year. I threw this one in there. One of my high school IDs, that's right. A UV card and my room key from Hawaii. Now for cash, I've got my smaller bills here. I put a big bill and some Australian money in there for my wonderful Australian friends. All right, all that fit in the Ollet wallet. Look at that, that's a lot of stuff. So where to start? Let me just pick one off the top of the stack. First, let me try the bizarre peanut butter and jelly sandwich wallet. Mighty thin, mighty strong, and mighty green. All the comfort of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the mess. I'm not, is this serious or not? I'm not sure. All right, it's finally opened. What a strange looking, look at this. Look at the inside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and read these over and make sure I'm doing everything correctly. I don't wanna be like some reviewers out there who shall remain nameless, who don't even read instructions. Read these over, I'll get right back to you. All right, I've read the instructions on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich wallet. So they have two money pouches here two credit card slots, and in the side, they have two business card slots. It also supposedly adjusts in thickness as you need it. So it'll stay thin if you don't have much in there, and it'll stay thicker if you have more. Big bills from US and Australia. Smaller bills. Can I put all these credit cards in the same slot? Let me see. Oh, I, oh, I did. Oh, it's getting, it's getting thicker. Maybe I can squeeze this phone stand underneath my IDs. I did it. I fit everything in the peanut butter and sandwich wallet. Well, that right there is already kind of impressive, but not for the real test. Let's see how it feels. Well, as with all of these wallets, I'm not gonna just load it up once and say whether it works or not. I'm gonna go out there in the real world each day with a different wallet and use them in the real world and see how they actually work. One of the features of the Mighty Wallet is that it's supposed to be tear-proof. They even have this card that comes with it. It says Dare to Tear, and there's other YouTube videos out there that show people trying to tear it. Let's try the card first, because I think the card is actually made of the same material. Yeah, this is not, this is not gonna be t torn easily. Let's try the wallet itself. I'm kind of rooting for it to not tear because I really like this wallet and I might want to keep using it. Let's give it a shot though. Oh wow. Oh no, it's not tearing. That is an accurate claim. You know what else can't tear? Australian money. That's right, it doesn't tear. 
I need to go back there one of these days. If I do, maybe, maybe some of you guys can show me around next time. Real world test number one with the peanut butter and jelly sandwich wallet. So far, so good. I'm currently sitting on my peanut butter and jelly sandwich mighty wallet. Now I know this, the last time I did a wallet video, people raked me over the coals for sitting on my wallet. Well, guess what? People do sit on their wallets. I, not everybody takes their wallet out every time they sit down or sit in the car. Some people put it in the console. I get that. I, and I used to do that, but a couple of times I forgot my wallet, so I stopped doing that. So yeah, I'm sitting on the wallet. But it's actually pretty thin and light. Um, it's surprisingly good. I've actually used it a couple times already today and it works well. Right now, I'm actually pretty impressed with it just as a wallet, not to mention that it's origami, can't really tear it, and it's light. The peanut butter and jelly sandwich wallet is off to a great start. All right, next up. The Dream Phone Case Wallet. This is a magnetic uh, clasp right here, which is kind of nice. It's funny, my daughter uses one almost exactly like this from a different brand. Uh, I think the one I bought for her was more expensive than this one though. Again, this isn't really supposed to be a fully loaded wallet, it's more like a wallet alternative. So it just has some wallet spaces here, but not a lot. All right, ideally I'll be able to fit the essentials in here, and then I wouldn't need my wallet at all. Actually, I can fit a little bit more than that. So let me put a couple business cards and my phone stand. All right, and it does close. It's a little bit thick, but it does close. Now this one I won't put in my back pocket, put my front pocket where I usually put my phone. It's kind of thick, but I've got two different things there. My phone, my phone case, and all my cards and cash. So I actually free up a pocket that way, even though the one I usually use is a little bit thicker. I'll be interested to see how this works when I carry this around for a day though. Well, day two isn't really starting off like I thought it would, but regardless of that, I've got my dream wallet phone case, so I'm ready to face the day right now and face the dentist unexpectedly. Okay, well, my day with the Dream Wallet phone case is just wrapping up now. I've got to say, I'm slowly getting used to it, but what's weird about this one, at least to me, is that I'm sure that I'm not alone, and I'm one of those people that, when I'm leaving, I always have to do the, the three-point inspection. Wallet, phone, keys. Wallet, phone, keys. And I've been doing that inspection all day, and the wallet's not there. It's just phone and keys. A little bit strange to get used to, but I actually kind of like it. I'm not sure if I'm going to convert to this kind of wallet or not, but I potentially could. I kind of like the idea of it. You can consolidate your wallet and your phone into one. It's pretty nice. If you're one of those people that like a suitcase full of stuff in your wallet, there's no way this is gonna hold it all. I think if you like the idea of this, you would definitely like the Dream Wallet Phone Case. I'm heading back home now, so I may not be using much more of this, but I've enjoyed using it. So what's up for tomorrow? Let's find out. Let's try the As Seen on TV top wallet. This is definitely a George Costanza wallet. Look at the size, look at the thickness of this, and it's empty. Whoa, whoa. It's like an accordion. It says two cards can be placed in each slot. But we recommend placing your most used cards at the top. I don't think this is gonna be my most used one. That's kind of a tight squeeze in there. It's very purse-like. It's very purse-like. I mean, well, I mean, it's a little bit, it's a little bit awkward feeling to load this thing up. I mean, some of these down at the bottom barely even come out of there. Now I know why they're saying to put the ones that use most in the top because I'm kind of having to fish to even get these bottom ones high enough for me to load them. Look how small, that won't fit a card. It's, it's too narrow. I'm gonna put my phone stand right there. 
They have a special pouch for your ID, which I'll put right there. I'll put my, my expired room key in here. My UV card towards the bottom, because I don't use that one too often, especially in the wintertime. They even say in the instructions that you have to probably use two hands, and I can see why, because when I'm trying to shove it in here, look at this. It's just push, it's not even going in there, it's just pushing down. Not a great design, really. Now, these lower ones are kind of useless. I think I know why they call it the top wallet, because the bottom ones are kind of useless. I'm just going to shove my business cards right there, because I don't like these bottom slots. It says, it says compact design, and it's already thick before it's even loaded. The outside pocket is supposed to be for cash. Who wants, to, who wants your cash on the outside? And you still have to fold it anyways. I don't know. Am I going to stick my cash right there? No, come on. You want your cash like that? No, you know what's amazing to me is as thick as this thing is, there seems like there's nowhere to put anything. How is that possible? I'm just going to shove this stuff in here somewhere. I'm just going to shove that in there just randomly. All right, everything is in the top wallet. I don't love the top wallet already, I can tell you. I can see why this isn't really widely sold anymore. Look how thick that looks. All this stuff was in my, my Ollet wallet in a much smaller space. Look how thick. It's seriously George Costanza thickness. And there's a lot of extra space in there too. Let me try it out. Whoa, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I need some napkins to lift me up on the other side to even out. That is really thick. Wow. But I vow to use this for a full day and maybe I'll, it'll win me over. But my first impression isn't so great. All right, let me talk about the top wallet for a second here. Not a fan, not a fan. First of all, look how thick that is, ridiculous. But really getting the money in and out of here is just not, it's not good because I was paying for some food earlier at the mall here. I put my money back in there and I realized I had to add some more money. But look at this. It's like, it's like you get to shove it in there and then I have more money. So what do I like? I have to pull it back out and then unfold it. It's a disaster. I have to do all this just to put a few books back in there. And it's so thick being, and it's on the outside. I don't like that. This, you have to unsnap it to get your cards out. I just, just not a fan of the top wallet at all, but I'm gonna keep using it for the rest of day three. Maybe it'll win me over, but probably not. So I was at a YouTube meet up here in Las Vegas and a friend of mine, Jeff King, who has the Den of Tools YouTube channel uh, was there and I mentioned the wallet I had done for my mail time number three, the Ollet wallet. And just like the scene from American Psycho where they have the business cards, he pulls out his extra wallet and he said, this is a great wallet that you should check out. So I contacted the company and they sent me a couple. All right, so next up, let's load up the extra and see what that's all about. Now, when I contacted the company, they said they'd send me one to use, but they sent me three and three tracking cards. Again, these are three different models, so I'm just going to have to choose one. The brown leather looks really nice. Whoa. Whoa, wait a second. What's this? I haven't read the instructions, but I pushed this button, and the cards just popped out. That's, I, think I'm, I think I might like this one. They all have that button. And the other thing is these come with these tracking cards, which these allow you to find your wallet. Now they say you're supposed to put the cards you use the most here. It'll hold four to six depending on their thickness. And then the other cards you use can go in here, cash right there. So I'd probably put my ID over here. I'll also put my phone stand in here as well. Let me see. Now I got four. I'll just take four cards. These four I use the most. The fact that I've got electrical tape on here might make these thicker than they should be, so I may not be able to get more than four in here, but you can supposedly fit up to about six. So I've got my four most used cards in here. I've got my ID, but let's try the, let's try the important stuff, which is the cash. All right, and there we go. Again, I, I was not able to put everything in here and I still have the tracking card to put in and I have the tracking card to set up. So you, you first you download this app. All right, so I'm supposed to firmly press 
this button. Aha, I found it. Boom! I like when technology works right the first time. Now it says you can ring to find it. Aha, there's a pocket back here to fit the tracking card. Boom, I do like that. Very nice. Uh, you know, it's kind of thick, it's kind of thick. Again, I need to use this for a little while to, to make a final decision on it. All right, day four is over. I've used my extra wallet all day long. I've been out and about. It's a great wallet. I like the push button that pops your credit cards out. Very cool. Now this one it probably isn't one that's gonna hold a large number of things. For the minimalist out there, it's a perfect choice and it's a smart wallet, which I'm gonna test that out tomorrow. So that's next. It's now it's beyond the scope of this video to do a full review of the tracking features, but here's how it works. I've tried the tracking device in my house just to see how loud the ringer is. And it, it rings pretty much loud enough that anywhere in my house I can hear it. But I've got it in my backyard where there's some freeway traffic going on right now. The tracker is about 30 feet away from where I'm sitting right now. There's a map there that will also show the last location. And if you lose it, there's a community feature on there. If you're lucky enough that someone else running the same tracking software walks past it, you might get a hit. It's kind of hit or miss. But let's try the ringer from across the yard and see if I can hear it. Oh, I hear it. I hear it. It's, it's faint, but I can hear it. Bailey hears it. Bailey, what is that? Bailey, what is that? Bailey, what is it? So out here with the noise, uh, I think 30 feet was about as far as I, I'm going to hear it, but indoors it has a longer range because it's so quiet. Out here it's kind of loud. So the tracking feature of the Exter is really good, especially if it's just at home and you know you've just misplaced it somewhere. It's it, maybe in your bedroom you can't find it. If you've lost it out in public somewhere, it's a little bit more hit or miss. But for someone like me who's always misplacing my wallet at home, it's actually a great feature. All right, one more, my cheap supposedly ASEAN TV, which I don't think it's ASEAN TV. Stick on phone wallet. I'm gonna put it on this iPhone 7 Plus. Oh, that's, that's pretty minimal. Come on now. How do, you, how do you call that a wallet? It's like one pouch. It says it fits most phone cases, it's ultra thin, stretches to hold up to 10 cards and removes cleanly. I was supposed to use just one to replace my wallet. We shall see. All right, my OCD friends, is that straight enough? Close enough? Well, it has to be. Oh, it is stretchy. It's a, it's a different feeling than I thought it would be. It's pretty kind of Am I going to fit 10 cards in there? Is there any chance that I can fit 10 cards in there? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to try seven business cards. Will that work? Well, hey, you know what? Seven business cards fit. I give, I give them credit for that. Now, if it can hold up to 10 cards, it should be able to hold these four and a little bit of cash. Oh, it is stretching. You know what? It shockingly fit those things in there. Can I squeeze a little bit of cash in there as well? Cash doesn't want to go all the way down. Wow, that's completely stuffed. Let me try my pocket. Well, it doesn't feel much thicker than a regular phone. To me, this is just something you would take to, to the gym or hiking where you really have to be as minimal as possible. I noticed something on the packaging here. They showed some earphones in there and that plays into my theory that the gym is a perfect place for these so i got some earphones right here let me see if i can put them in there i got them kind of tightly wound let's see how realistic this is i mean i mean i guess i am i'm not sure it's good for earphones or not packaging versus reality isn't always the same thing but I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna go in the gym right now. I'm training with my trainer, Kyle. I don't think he's gonna be in the video this time. Sorry, people, I know that he's always a good conversation piece, but I'm gonna go work out, and then when I'm doing my cardio, I'll pull my headphones out of here, and hopefully it works. And then tomorrow, wrap all this up. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, I've got an important update post-gym on the phone pocket wallet, whatever you want to call it. Let me see if I can duplicate what happened in there. 
Just to clarify, I've got ID card and some cash in here, and I also have the headphones in there. I reached in my pocket to pull my phone out, and it was, apparently I put it in there upside down, not realizing it. The headphones grabbed onto the cash, and they fell out. So when I pulled my phone out, all I saw was this, and this was on the floor. That's not good. It might be okay for a couple cards and stuff, but when you start adding thickness to it, the potential for stuff to fall out increases. Let me go home and wrap this up. But I've realized over the last week when using these wallets that there really is no one size fits all wallet. Everybody has a different idea of what they are looking for. So it's kind of hard to really compare these to each other. So I would really maybe give them a, a numeric rating based on their own merits and not compared to each other. But starting off with the phone pouch, which is the last one I used. Pros and cons, it's extremely minimal. I mean, look at that. And it does stretch to hold several items. So it's kind of cool in that respect. Now the cons would be that it's not really a wallet. I don't think a single pouch on the back of your phone can really be considered an actual wallet. It's situational. There are probably times when you'd want something very minimal, like if you're going hiking or the gym, you want maybe a card, ID, a couple bills of cash. It might work then. I'm not sure this is really even a full-fledged wallet. I'll give it a five and a half. Next up, the luxury Eggster wallet. It's a beautiful wallet. I mean, look at that. The pros would be that it's quite minimal. It's sleek, has the nice optional tracking feature, which works pretty well. It's very stylish. I love the push button access to the cards. The only cons would be that it probably doesn't hold quite as much as other wallets do, but I think that's kind of the idea of a minimalist wallet. So really, I think this is a, a solid entry. I'm going to give this one a nine. Let's take a look at the Dream wallet phone case. The pros would be that it combines a wallet and a phone case. So you actually free up an entire pocket. It holds a decent amount of stuff and it looks and feels really nice. Uh, the only cons would be that if it's really stuffed, it doesn't close quite as well. And I don't know if it's really a substitute for a full-size wallet. The only thing is that texting and talking with this case on there is a little bit, I guess it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's awkward at first, but overall, if you're looking for something to combine your phone case and your wallet together, I think the Dream is a great choice. I'll give this one an eight and a half. I'll admit, I bought this one thinking it was going to be a joke wallet. I did not take it seriously at all. I thought it was just gonna be something fun to include in this video, but it actually ends up being a good wallet. It's extremely durable. I've had people write into me and tell me that they've been using it for 10 years and it still works. Some people said they've washed it multiple times and it still holds up. It's, a, it's very lightweight. It actually expands to hold more stuff as you put it in there. It can hold a lot of stuff too. Not to mention that it got just have some cool designs. The only problem is sometimes these side pockets tend to not be as secure as I would like. But overall, I don't have much really bad to say about this one. I'm gonna give this one a solid nine. And finally, the As Seen on TV top wallet. I'm gonna say the pros are that it holds a lot of stuff. And that's about it. The cons, the mechanism to access your cards is quite awkward, especially after the first couple pouches. You have to kind of use two hands sometimes. Your cash is like exposed and to get it in and out is a little bit difficult. It's thick even when it's empty. It's just, it's just not a good wallet. I'm gonna say the top wallet is pretty bad. I'm gonna give it a generous two. My only question now is will the Olet wallet, which I've recently converted to, be replaced by the Mighty wallet or maybe the Extra wallet? I don't think I'm gonna switch to a phone case wallet, although I do like this one quite a bit. So I don't know. There's some good choices in here. And speaking of good choices, I'm gonna give away four wallets in this video. That's right, four of them. I got three of these extra wallets to give away, and I'm gonna give away a Mighty Wallet directly off of Amazon. So here's how it's gonna work. For extra, we're gonna go, since I have three of them, we're gonna go Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, is each going to get one winner. Just comment on the post for this video, and I'll randomly select the winner for those wallets. On the Mighty Wallet, I'm gonna do a community post here on YouTube featuring this wallet, in fact, I'll make this the photo right here. When you see this picture in your community tab, follow the link to the Amazon vendor which I bought this one from. There's a few choices. Mention the one you would like and I'll pick one winner on the community tab for that as well. I would say aside from the top wallet which is absolutely atrocious and the pouch wallet which isn't really a wallet, I've got three really good choices here and I'm happy about that. Have you guys used any of these wallets? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please follow my social profiles for progress pictures videos as I go. And please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, Freaking Reviews.